we have lost our connections to some of the most profound and important things in life. And we need a process of reconnection and home building. So the only thing, and there's lots of other things I talk about in the book, obviously it's just a small part of it. But, but, but I do think we, the, the one good thing about the crisis we're in, massively rising depression, massively rising anxiety, massively rising addiction, something you and I have both done a lot of work on and you do amazing work on, um, and, and, and I would argue a rising political crisis, the, there's many things going on with all of them, of course, but I think something that connects all of them is this deep disconnection from the things that really matter in life. Mm. And, and, and we can answer those needs. We can rebuild them. And I go through lots of practical things that we can do as individuals, as communities, and as a society. But I think it has to start with building a more accurate map of why we're in such pain in the first place. With a minute left, um, <laughs> I'm going to ask you, because it takes much more than a minute to answer, but we'll do our best. Maybe specific to Vermont, too, since that's where we are. Um, which is probably a great microcosm for the rest of the U.S. in a lot of ways. We have rural areas, people who have difficulty accessing the kinds of resources they might need. Um, we have a quote-unquote urban area, but sort of like a college town where it seems that people have plenty of resources, but maybe psychologically lost. The story you explained, it reminds me of people who might say that in order to gain social cohesion, to so people come out of the woodwork with the skills that they have to bear for a situation, we need some sort of a tragedy happening. But I don't think that's right. I don't think you need, yes, I, I see that from tragedy comes this sort, of, this sort of social glue, coming together, people wanting to be something bigger than themselves. Um, but it sounds like there are probably more subtle ways to do it. I don't know well, if you have a... I, yeah, yeah, we're in the tragedy. Yeah. One in three middle-aged women in this country is having to drug themselves to get through the day with a chemical antidepressant just to get through the day. And there's loads more who are really distressed who are not taking those drugs. The tragedy's happened. We can have a debate about do you need a tragedy or not, but we're in the middle of the tragedy, right? right it's like right. asking at the end of Romeo and Juliet, do we need a tragedy? Well... Yet somehow uh, our spider senses aren't uh, completely activated. Tingling, but not completely activated. Well, I like, think partly because we have told these very simplistic diversionary stories, not that there's no truth in them, there's some truth in them, yeah. but if what we've done is you've got this enormous amount of distress in the society, we've just said to everyone, oh, it's just a problem in each individual's brain. Right, right. right? That, you can see how that is not the intention of people who say it, of course, who are decent people, but that diverts us away from seeing this is not a crisis in each isolated individual. This is a crisis in the way we're living in the society, and we have to deal with it at that level. People. And there's loads of practical things we can do to do that. 